This is probably the most impractical camper build that there has ever been, but this is by far the coolest thing that I think I've ever done. So this is part two of the build series, turning a Japanese K-truck into a mini truck camper. If you haven't already, go watch part one where we import the truck and build out the frame. In this video, we're gonna be putting on the walls, new shocks and some final touches. Hopefully get this thing on the road without it tipping over or blowing up the engine or any other thing that can happen. So yeah, anyways, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so far. Hope you guys like it. All right, so it is currently day five of the build. We've got everything done. We just got these uh, posts welded up for the frames of the windows. The last thing we need on here is a lower, a lower on that side. And then we're adding two cross member supports on the roof as well. So that the roof has enough space where we can put down tape to uh, put on the roof panel so it sticks a little better as opposed to just having that one center beam and the two side beams. And then today we're also figuring out how to mount my bed because my bed, I'm planning for it to be right up here. And we were trying to figure out a way to have the bed extend out and fold back. But the only issue was this this measurement from here to here is only 2.5 feet and i need the bed to be six feet so i wouldn't be able to just have something slide out from here because that would only be five feet so we need to make it extend a little longer so we came up with something that theoretically should work So the idea behind this bed is basically Trevor welded up these C-channel U-brackets, whatever, I don't know what you would call this, but he welded these things together. And we're basically gonna take two of these. We have one on this side of the camper and there's gonna be one on that side of the camper. And wherever the end of my bed is, which for me is that front shelf plus four feet, three and a half feet, whatever gets me to six feet from there to here, is where we're gonna stick these onto the side of the frame like this, and these are gonna be permanently welded on here. One on this side, one on that side. And then once these pieces are welded into the side, it'll give me a place to slot in some of this one inch steel and create the end of my bed. And then for supports in the middle, I'm gonna have two 48 inch bars that kind of come out right here and right here that have hooks on them. So they'll latch onto the bar this way. And then the same thing, on this end one right here, they'll, they'll, they'll latch over it like that. So that's the plan. Everything is under 48 inches. So when I'm done with it, it can all be stowed up here out of the way so that when I'm standing back in the back here, I don't have any pieces for my bed kind of sticking out or anything. So everything is under 48 inches, which is less than the width of this camper. So everything should be able to sew away nicely and I'll have my deployable bed. That's what I'll call it. So this is the uh, final idea for the bed flushed out. So we've got our brackets here that are mounted. This piece is removable. Both of these pieces are removable. And then these kind of just slot down into here so they don't slide out when I hop into bed. But essentially this is the floating bed platform. It should be enough to hold me up, especially with the uh, wooden slats going across. But worst case, if I ever need to, I could just pop a little center support right under this right here and be, be good to go. But this is my fully removable bed. All of these will pull out when I'm ready to go to sleep and they'll all store up here nice and easily. It'll take me two seconds to build it and then they'll all go right up here, which will be convenient for keeping them out of the way. So 
So yeah, I think with a uh, center support, that's like removable, something I'll just buy off of Amazon that'll go from here down to the floor, along with that center support, which we just uh, added in there just because it can't hurt to have that extra support on that side of the bed as well. This contraption here will be more than enough to support my body weight and hopefully maybe one other person if I ever have someone come out camp with me. But I think that's gonna be pretty much it for day five. We're just waiting on a shipment of the VHB tape, the tape that we're gonna use to put up these panels on the side walls to get here. And we can't really do much else. We've got the frame fully built. Trevor's gonna come back a little later today and put this one last piece up across the top. But there's not really much else to do. We can't put in the windows, the door, or anything until we get those side walls up, so. It's not as heavy as I thought it was. It's not as light as I would like it to be, but it's definitely sturdy. And I think the mini truck is gonna do just fine handling this, especially with uh, some new suspension that we're gonna be throwing on there. And then some new tires, our light truck tires, and then maybe some other mods down the road, but I guess we'll see. But anyway, see you guys in the morning. So we're putting the battery back in. We're gonna start wiring up this additional tail light. And I thought it would be cool. You can't see them now, but the original tail lights that came on the truck, I wanna incorporate those into the camper itself. I did my new ones just in case, but I think I do wanna use these old ones. So we're gonna try to incorporate these into the camper, but I did buy an additional brake light slash reverse light slash turn signals. So we got this one right here. That's just this strip LED that essentially is gonna go across the top back here and be a one long, kind of Tesla-esque taillight ideally, but we gotta figure out how to wire it up. So we got the multimeter. We're gonna start testing some stuff. I think that one is the running lights. Okay. So that one top left is running lights. So right now we're labeling all the wires with what they correspond to up front. So right now we got the running lights on. That's the only one with power. And then we're gonna kind of cycle through all of them with the left turn signal, right turn signal, brake, reverse, and then Hopefully get them all labeled and wired up. All right, uh, what do you want next? Left turn signal. Left turn signal. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is your left turn. We're fluctuating by about four volts. So top right is getting some voltage on the voltmeter and all of the other ones are getting none. So we're assuming that that one is the left turn signal. Now we just rinse and repeat for that one and then both sides. All right, so we've got all of our stuff labeled. Left turn, running brake on both sides reverse and then this is the uh, license plate light and then essentially this light that we're gonna be putting up on top has these wires that correspond to those things right now so you got your ground I don't know why it's so blurry ground running left turn and brake right turn and brake and then your reverse lights so we're just gonna take these wires splice them heat shrink them into these wires and hopefully we've got a working tail light Hey, why are you yelling at me? I'm working. Oh, well, those are nifty. So these guys um, are what I'm doing explosives on set. Uh -huh. And they just need nice clean cuts. Turn the truck on a little bit. Let's see if this, you don't have to run it or anything. Let's just see if this kicks on. Do left turn. Do break. Okay. Hey, do break again. Look at that. There we go. We know it works. We just had to loosely fit up there. 
You got these nice automotive disconnects for whenever I want to take the trailer off. And this thing is super easy to install. It's just like a 3M sticky tape all along the back that we're just gonna stick up to the top whenever we're done. And I might paint a, like a like a misty film over this to make it so it's not just a bunch of dots, but we'll see. So now we just gotta get these other sides wired up to these quick disconnects, and then we'll be able to hit the ground running once we get the tape in for those panels, which we're still waiting on. Messed up the shipments twice. It's been a pain to get that the, the tape we need for the panels here, but we should be good to go. Hit the ground running once we get the panels up on the sides here. Then there's just a few things we gotta button up and uh, finish up tomorrow. And then the next day, we're getting these wall panels put up and we're getting this thing finished. And I am very excited. So tomorrow we're making some upgrades to the suspension reinstalling the brake system because we had to disengage it when we took the uh, bed of the truck off. And then we're gonna finish up grinding that wall down, making it flush so it's good for that tape to adhere. And I cannot wait to finally get these walls up, but that's it for today. We got as much as we can done. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the final day before we put those walls up. Alrighty, we are on day eight. I just got here, but Trevor's been here for a while working on these little vertical tabs. So I'm gonna try to get away with a half inch subfloor on the bottom there. And he just put in a bunch of these vertical flat bar pieces like that piece over there, all the way down both sides to give me a little bit more rigidity to hopefully allow me to save some weight and get away with a half inch subfloor as opposed to a uh, three fourths inch, but I guess we'll see. So for today, it's just a little bit of touch up, finishing up some stuff and then these just came in yesterday, which are my new shocks that we're gonna be putting on the front and the back of this thing to help with the uh, additional weight of the camper on the back there. And these were custom made in Taiwan. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Wow. So we're gonna get these things put on. And then if you notice, I talked about it a little bit yesterday, along the back on this, the original bed, there's all these little mounting pieces that were attached here that connected to something in the truck. Most important which of those being this one right here, which slots in the brakes and allows you to actually use your brakes. So we're gonna have to take this off of here and we're gonna mount a steel bar going across here, mount it onto here and hook these, uh, hook these brakes back on so they have something to grab onto so that I can actually use my brakes. And then all the other mounting points are just like little supports for some of these pipes and tubes and other little things. But having that right here will be an attachment point for all of those that's separate from the camper so I can still take it on and off. So we're gonna get those on, that on, and today will be the official last day that the camper is naked. So we've got all four of the new struts, backside and front in, but we're noticing when we drop it back down, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but these wheels kind of camber in a little bit. So we're gonna drive it around, see if it kind of settles in and then make some final adjustments on those. Boy, that's soft. That was yeah. nice. We're driving good. First time I've driven her in a long time. But the new shock seems like they're, uh, seems like they definitely got a little bit more uh, stiffness to them, which is what we're looking for. Now we gotta just get back and check the camber, see if it's a little bit better aligned. And then once I get those new tires on, I'll probably take it into the shop and get a, get a full alignment on it. Made it back in one piece. Definitely still cambered in. Might need to make some more adjustments, but it looks a little bit better than it did. Maybe, I, I don't know, I can't really tell. All right, so we've been toying around with these for like 25, 30 minutes, and we figured out why it was having a camber on it. Is it camber or camber? So the tires were cambered in positively, kind of like that. And we found these two bolts, because uh, some of them you can adjust on these top bolts up here. But these ones, on these two bolts down here, 
we just had to loosen these up and kind of tilt the tire in and move it about three millimeters and that uh that straightened out the wheel on both sides so we're good to go new shocks installed and then once we get the weight on here we'll adjust these back ones because they have little dials on them we're gonna adjust how much bounce back you get but last thing we're gonna do today that bar across here to hook up the uh, parking brake so we can use that and just uh, give us some mounting supports for some of this other stuff in here Honestly, I'm not too sure what day it is. It doesn't really matter. Today, we're gonna try to put up the siding on the wall of the camper because the tape is finally here. This tape took forever to get here. It had a bunch of issues with shipping, but it's finally here. We've got three rolls of it and we're ready to get started prepping that cage to get some walls. Uh, last night, we finalized this. It's just this bar that goes across. We welded the parking brake to it, so now it has something to pull on. We also added the uh, mounts for this tube and welded on the mounts for the radiator back. So everything should be good, ready to go. Now we just gotta get to work prepping this, removing all this paint that we put on. Initially we plan on using rivets, but with this tape stuff, you kind of need the bare metal. So I bought this specialty 3M Scotch-Brite pad to help us get there. And then there's a few more steps of prep because this stuff takes a lot of prep in order to do it right. First things first, let's get to grinding. Also Trevor wasn't feeling very well today, so he might be coming in a little bit late. All right, that took a lot longer than I anticipated. About an hour and a half straight, maybe two hours of grinding, but she is sparkling, shiny, on all outside surfaces, all the way around. Looking pretty again. You just gotta wipe everything down and clean it. And then I bought this special primer from 3M called Primer 94 that's supposed to help with adhesion of the tape. And then 3M also recommends wiping down the surfaces with 70% isopropyl alcohol. So we got a bunch of those. the entire frame sanded down clean and primed with the uh, 3m tape primer now we're just waiting for it to dry it'll probably take like 35 40 minutes i'm over waiting for that i figured i have this uh abrasion disc i might as well use it on the truck get rid of some of this rust and uh paint over while i got the back off just some touch-up paint along some of the weld points where the bolts go. I'm probably gonna get the whole undercarriage painted at some point anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but this stuff, this primer on here seems like it's dry. So now it's time to put that VHB tape on. So this is a very specific type of tape from 3M. We have this one, which is CV62F, which is 62 millimeter by one inch commercial vehicle VHB tape specifically made for this purpose. And then we have this one, which is CV45F, which is 45 millimeter by one inch VHB tape that is gonna be used for the panel overlaps. So this attaches it to the frame, and this is for the panel overlaps. All right, so for measuring these panels, the thing I gotta think about is the overlap seams and where I want them to be and have them facing away from the wind if there are any vertical ones, which I don't think there will be. We got a bunch of four by eight sheets and a bunch of five by 10 sheets. So I'm gonna put four by eights down here, cut at this panel, five by tens on the top so that way we only have one overlap seam on each side right here in the middle so there'll be one panel that covers all of this 
and then one panel that covers all of this, and then one five by 10 that goes from here all the way back to the back there. Two panels here with an overlap in the middle facing down, and then up front is small enough just to have one panel, one panel, one panel. So this side is just about seven feet long, 44 inches high. And I'm gonna leave it the full eight feet because the panel is gonna come out to here and then just taper back to the bottom to kind of make it not have such a boxy shape. But yeah, Trevor's not feeling well today. He won't be back in. So I'm just gonna do the bottom panels today. And then when he gets back, we'll go in and do the top panels. There we go. That is our beautiful sidewall. Fully installed, at least one of them. And I think that's all I'm gonna get to today. It was so hard to get this thing lined up perfectly since it's like raised off the floor, but we got it in, it is stuck up, it is rolled on. And supposedly this stuff is stronger than rivets. So it should hold up to driving down the road. I mean, I tested it after I put it on. Like if I pull with all my force, I can't even pull it off. It's also supposed to allow for better flex and not uh, crack apart like rivets would, but I guess time will tell. But the only reason I was actually even able to get this one up is because my brother came out to hang out because we're going to an event later. So he helped me line it up and everything, but I'm gonna wait for Trevor to get back tomorrow. And we're gonna put on the rest of these panels and hopefully get the door and the windows up, finally. We have got the sidewalls up and then this front wall in 
finally we got everything closed in on the sides and on the front but this top piece is gonna be a little bit more difficult because we don't really want to seam here on the front so we're using one solid sheet of 5x10 which he's over here measuring some stuff for and essentially the sheet is gonna go is gonna cover this whole under area bend up wrap around this bend up wrap around that and then bend over the back there so that there's no seam until that back bar there so this is all going to be one solid piece up to about halfway through the back and this stuff that we got it does bend like you can bend it but there is a threshold where you bend it to and it just snaps and that's right a little bit before 90 degrees so our plan is to and what it says online is to basically cut it down either track saw it or router it down to just before the outer edge of this so that we can fold it up onto itself and uh wrap it around the roof or at least that's the plan but she's looking good super strong these panels are overlaid onto each other so this bottom panel there's about an inch overlay with a slightly thinner tape on the overlay part so you can't really even notice it that much especially once we take these uh protective covers off but yeah it is finally coming together and then this uh back piece here is going to be just like these two sides it's going to have a seam right there one piece here one piece here and then there's going to be one separate piece of the roof that's going to have a seam right on that bar yeah right now we're getting uh some of the measurements for this piece to router out those sections so we can bend it over those corners So everybody knows I got the flu and slowed everything down for this man <laughs> no big deal and it sucks yeah. so but he's been a champ and been sticking with me so I'm pretty pretty happy about it <laughs> even though I have like we're still making it work 10% in my tank we're making it work though it work. tomorrow we finish the walls And there she is, fully installed. We've got all the sidewalls on, they're all tacked in place. We still got this protective film that we gotta remove. And then the last thing we gotta do is uh, backside and then cut out the windows and the doors, but this is it. She's not sitting too low. She's got a good, uh, good amount of clearance still. So sick seeing this thing. It looks a lot taller with the sides on it, but I mean, it fits well. After we take all this plastic off, I'm gonna take it on its maiden voyage around the uh, parking lot here and see how she handles.
All right, battery's in. She's looking absolutely beautiful with her all white walls. Looks like it's factory made. These bends came out perfectly. No breaks in them. Nice seamless roof. And that's the only seam that you really see on the entire thing other than in the back, but let's take it for a drive. Off we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This is probably the most impractical camper build that there has ever been. But this is by far the coolest thing that I think I've ever done. <laughs> this is so cool. That is crazy. It almost looks like it was made for this truck. That's what I'm saying. And we still got about what? Probably about 10 inches coming off the back here. We got to trim this up. It's going to be like angled down, kind of like that. But man. Runs beautifully. Probably uh, wouldn't go around a turn at more than 15. Might tip over on me, but we can always tighten that suspension in the back, make it work a little better, but that is beautiful. I'll set you guys down, drive it around a little bit. Forgot it's right hand drive. All right, so we know that she can handle that amount of weight, which is roughly around probably 280, maybe 300. She can handle that well on flat ground. Hills might be another story, but while I was out toying around with this thing, Trevor's been getting the uh, area cleaned up so we can pull it back in here. We're gonna get these windows installed. While he's doing that, I'm looking at this door and I'm gonna try to find a way to remove this centerpiece right here because this door has a bear proof screen that weighs 30 pounds for some reason, but it also has this outer door. So I'm looking for a way to remove this inner screen and attach this latch to this outer door to save the weight on this and just use this outer size door. I don't know if it's gonna work. It might destroy this thousand dollar door in the process and have to fabricate an entirely new one, but I guess we'll see. Trevor's gonna be back here. He's already got started cutting on uh, one of these windows. So there's gonna be a window on either side right there and right there, and he's basically just cutting a hole and then popping the window through. It's pretty, pretty simple process, so he's gonna get those cut.
we're done. At least with the shell, mostly. The entire shell is completed. Windows are in. We just got the door put in and we actually had to do a little bit of modifying to this door to get it to work um, at least the way that I wanted to so when it came it weighed 45 pounds and we were able to cut it down and save half of the weight on this door um, by modifying it a little bit doesn't look as pretty but I'll show you guys what we did to get the weight down on that because every pound counts so when this door came it came bear proof so it came with this screen right here on the inside of it that's like this thick metallic mesh, which apparently made it bear proof and claw proof and knife proof and whatever else that I guess you'd be worried about breaking in. But this weighs like 20 pounds. So it was about half the weight of the door and there was no way to just remove this and use this door because the locking mechanism wasn't even attached to this door. It was attached right here. And we just sawed it out and then riveted it to the front of this door and slotted it in there. So that's why it's just this section of the door cut off and it uh, works absolutely beautifully. I mean, I could not be happier with how lightweight and perfect this door looks on the back of this camper. Shout out to Trevor for figuring this whole thing out with the door. It was my idea, but he was the one who kind of brought it to life and made it happen. So it's nice. We got a working door and it might not be bear proof, but it's at least moderately human proof with the lock on it. So at least I can somewhat lock it and feel a little bit safe, but yeah, super stoked with the way that everything has come out so far. We got these uh, angles trimmed up all the way up the side. Gives us a nice overhang for a little bit extra water protection here in the back. I got the old fenders off the bed from over there. I ripped them off while Trevor was working on the back and I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to attach them right onto here, pay homage to the uh, original truck. Last thing we gotta do today, tail lights. Gotta get those wired up and installed. So I don't know if I said this already, but I decided that I don't wanna use the original Daihatsu tail lights like I was originally gonna do because if you see them over here on the bed, they butt out like three and a half inches. So that would be inside of my wall, which I just doesn't feel like it's worth it. I could obviously make some modifications and do things to make those work, but I just don't feel like it. So we're gonna use these tail lights that I bought right here, the cages on them and they don't fit horizontally like this. So we're gonna do them vertically, one on this side, one on that side, and then we're gonna have the tail light strip up top. So I had to actually get a different one than this one because this one's a little too long and I thought you could just cut it to size, but you can't. So I had to buy a little bit smaller one of those, but we're gonna get all that wired up, get these fins that we added on the back here, stuck up, good to go, put the license plate on and then after that, the only thing we really have left to do is uh, seal up these corners. I'm gonna buy some PVC corner trim and just stick it on there. Put a piece of steam tape across the top and then it's onto the interior build. And these actually install super easily. It's just two bolts, connect the wires, and it should be good. So we're gonna drill some holes, get these put up. Oh, I thought you were telling me how easy oh. it was. <laughs> get, these, get these put up and then uh, should be good to go. There's also probably a bunch of other small things that I'm gonna have to do the exterior a little bit later that I forgot about, but by and large, the camper is finally complete. next day it got too late last night so we stopped wiring these up and just got them finished this morning so we've got this tail light installed definitely need to put some sealing around the outside around here but I'll do that later wired up good to go left side or right side I guess wired up good to go and then we've got holes drilled through the frame for these wires going up to the top for that uh, back top tail light whatever gets here and then uh, I'm just gonna install that myself 
in a few days. But we've officially got working taillights, which pretty much completes the entire build other than the corner trim and some of the edging stuff that I'm gonna do over the next few days. But the last thing that Trevor has to weld for me and that we have to do is get these mounts welded up. And he made these this morning. He made these L brackets and then added a pipe weld on, uh, on the end of each of these that we're gonna mount on all four of the corners so that we can use these whenever I need to do work on the engine or take it off for some reason. I can jack it up with these. So those will insert just like that. Jack it up, take the camper off, and hopefully make it a little bit easier. So they just pin in like that, jack them down. And this way I don't have to carry around those jacks because those are easily available pretty much anywhere you go. So I just have the weight of these additional brackets that are gonna be on the outside. And then if I ever need to take it off, I'll just find a set of one of those jacks, maybe get some legs, stabilize it. Should theoretically make it easier to take it off, but I guess we'll see what I need to do that. Is finished so Trevor finished welding up these pipe welds got the corners folded over stuck down and I actually did take the uh, the fenders or the flares whatever those are called from the original truck bed installed them or Trevor installed them on both sides okay. and now she is finally I think finished at least the shell radiator cover back on battery back in and that's it that's the final shell product so this is probably the end of this part of the build series of the mini truck shell is completed now i just got to move on to the interior build out which i'm gonna have to do some stuff to save some weight and hopefully make it drivable i don't know if i'm gonna have to tow it over mountains or if i'll just drive up from going 15 miles an hour but trevor has been out here for two weeks helping me build this thing probably actually no a little bit more he had the flu yeah. halfway through uh but still came out almost every single day with me to build this thing so that's been sick i love the way it turned out Shout out to Trevor, definitely follow him on Instagram. YouTube and all that YouTube, stuff. YouTube, whatever he's got. I'll link, I'll link all the Trevor stuff below. If you need to build anything out of metal, wood, whatever you need to build it, as long as it's cool. Trevor, gotta be cool. Trevor said he can pretty much build anything you want. So definitely reach out to him, very cool guy. And it was a awesome two weeks building the world's smallest mini truck. Smallest camper ever. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's definitely doable in, uh, in theory. We'll see over the next few months how practical this build is for traveling around and living in. Um, but either way, very excited. And uh, as always, if you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. I'll leave you guys with some cool B-roll of me driving around and doing some stuff in this thing. And I will catch you guys next time. <laughs> yeah, definitely stay in touch though. Over, uh, whether you're down here again, we get a beer or another good one.